In the previous video, I updated the dynamic link between HFSS 3D layout and EMIT to synchronize the latest coupling data of the improved design. I also disabled the faster bit rate for the Wi Fi and controller data lines and changed the clocks to a single lower speed. Now we can run a Desense analysis for the improved design in EMIT. Launch the analysis window in EMIT. Note that we're in the EMI margin mode. Run the simulation. The red square for the Wi Fi controller data line and receiver pair has turned green, indicating that interference due to the Wi Fi controller data line is mitigated. The marginal EMI from the controller clock remains the same as the initial design. I'll deal with that shortly. The worst case interference in the improved design is different and coming from the Wi Fi clock. Click the red square of the Wi-Fi clock and receiver pair. The result plot indicates that the interference is coming from the Wi-Fi clock's fundamental frequency. Observe that it's not in band of the channel. Click the receiver susceptibility button to highlight it in the plot. This curve represents the receiver's broadband vulnerability and is used to evaluate any unintended signal. Power at receiver is the unintended power that makes its way to the receiver antenna port from the aggressor pin. It's important to remember that this power includes the effect of the linked coupling from the HFSS design. Point EMI margin is the narrowband EMI margin at every frequency across the tuned receiver. The EMI could occur within the bandwidth of the tune channel or outside of it. Broadband in-band EMI margin is the margin contribution from all broadband noise sources in the tune channel. The flat bar indicates the roll-up value for all broadband noise integrated across the channel. One advantage of EMI margin mode is that the narrowband and broadband components are isolated and shown for clarity. When we go to Desense mode, the results show no interference. This is because for Desense mode, all out-of-band interference is suppressed. Remember, Desense considers margin calculated within the tune channel only and ignores any interference outside of it. To emphasize, all contributors of interference occurring within the tune channel are calculated in the Desense mode, whereas the EMI margin mode calculates all contributors of interference within and even outside the tune channel. Choose the reporting modes depending upon the contributors of interest. Since we want to calculate all problems, let's stay in the EMI margin mode. On the results categorization window, turn off all the out-of-band problems. The results are now identical to the ones for Desense mode because only in-band interfering signals are being revealed. This is a convenient way to filter through different categories of interference that are automatically calculated by EMIT. It's a powerful tool to quickly unravel mitigation strategies. Distinct colors offer an intuitive way to categorize the severity of interference. The colors appearing on the scenario matrix are based on the settings entered in the EMI margin panel. Here, we can define our threshold value and designate the color of our choice. Looking at the default states for the EMI margin, any positive value will show up as red. Values between 0 and negative 10 are colored yellow. Even though this pertains to a negative value, which is good, the yellow color signifies a marginal state where even slight changes could lead to problems. Notice any EMI margin less than negative 10 is colored green. The more negative the EMI margin, the better the design. We're free to designate any color and margin groupings for communicating any levels of severity. We can also color things by availability and by desense. Let's revert to our original settings in EMI mode and get back to our problem at hand. A narrow band signal from a clock is the main issue. The marginal problem is due to the same narrow band clock. But because the coupling is lower, so is the reported EMI margin. The worst case problem occurs at the fundamental frequency where the energy peaks and causes EMI. We can mitigate this problem by lowering the interfering signal's amplitude and spreading the energy over a wider bandwidth. Spread spectrum clocking, a commonly used frequency modulation technique in electronics design, can reduce EMI significantly. 
So on the EMIT design, we can change the periodic clocks to spread spectrum clocks using the behavioral models. Open the controller clock. The peak output voltage for the periodic clock signal is 3.3 volts. Change the waveform to spread spectrum clock. Choose low spread as the spreading type. Observe the difference in the waveforms. For the same output voltage, the fundamental frequency has a lower amplitude. The spectral content is distributed across the fundamental and the harmonics. I'll do the same for the Wi-Fi clock. Rerun the analysis in EMIT. This time the interference is mitigated across the board in every sense of the phrase. We have successfully eliminated EMI and DSense from our IoT board. The DSense and RFI workflow covered in this video series is relevant for different applications across a broad range of industries. We hope you've enjoyed this video series on mitigating RF DSense. Come back to our ANSYS Electronics YouTube channel for insightful videos on how to solve electromagnetic problems using ANSYS EM tools. Thanks for watching.